O come, divine Messiah, the, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Welcome back to our Advent retreat with St. Teresa of Los Andes. Today we begin week three on Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday on which we rejoice because the coming of the Lord is near. The theme for this week is a very fitting for Gaudete Sunday because we're reflecting on Teresa's experience that God is infinite joy. In the Gospel for Gaudete Sunday, John the Baptist testifies about Jesus. There is one among you whom you do not recognize. John testifies to the presence of Jesus in the midst of the crowds coming to him. But his presence is hidden, and so no one recognizes him. But we can apply John's testimony to ourselves. We know that Jesus is present in the soul of those who are in the state of grace. His presence is the source of our joy. However, this presence in our soul is a hidden presence, and we do not recognize him. Either because we do not frequently call to mind this presence of the one whom we know loves us, or because our presuppositions. Jesus is always more beautiful, more loving, and more merciful than we imagine. And because of this, we often miss his presence. Teresa of the Andes recognized in faith the presence of Jesus in her soul. This presence of the one whom she know loved her is what led her to the discovery that God is infinite joy. But Teresa had tremendous help to learn to live always in the presence of Jesus. From the time she was 15 years old, she was reading and relishing the writings of St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, a young Carmelite saint from Dijon, France, who had died not long before, when Teresa was six years old. Elizabeth had written beautifully about, the li about living recollected with the Trinity, who dwells in the soul. Teresa was fascinated with the way Elizabeth had lived recollected in the presence of the Trinity. She writes, I am reading Elizabeth of the Trinity. She enchants me. Her soul is like mine. Even though she was a saint, I will imitate her and be a saint. In one of her letters, Teresa describes to her friend Elisa what she, what she does to remain in the presence of the Trinity. Let us live completely immersed in God. I'll tell you what I do. I consider my soul as a heaven where the Most Holy Trinity resides, whom I cannot penetrate or see, because I consider it as an immense fire infinite in light. Very close to that fire, I imagine the Most Holy Virgin, inundated with light and love. Near the Most Holy Virgin is my father, St. Joseph, and all the angels and saints, each one with his corresponding place. And much lower, in the last place, I see myself as a dark point in that halo of light. And there I live, contemplating and adoring that Most Perfect One. The task is not to interrupt that praise of glory interiorly. Although on the outside we are busy, let us keep silence interiorly. It is later in the same letter when Teresa makes her declaration that God is infinite joy. Father Michael Griffin, the Carmelite friar who translated the writings of Teresa of those Andes into English, explains this discovery in the following way. He recalls that for St. Thomas Aquinas, joy is a form of love. It's the particular shape that love takes when it's in the presence of the one that it loves. For example, when a mother sees her son who has been away for a long time, she experiences joy. She always loved him even when he was away, but now that he is present, her love takes on the form of joy. If this is true in human love, we can only imagine the joy that must be in the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, each one loving the other infinitely, and infinitely loved by the other, and eternally present one to the other. Truly, the joy that is in the Trinity must be infinite. And then we ourselves are recollected in that presence of the Trinity who dwells in the soul. We share in this Trinitarian joy of loving and being loved. Because joy is the shape that love takes when in the presence of the beloved, 
Teresa of the Andes was able to remain joyful in the midst even of great suffering, of illness, of family difficulties, and darkness in prayer. Because in all of this, she remained recollected in the presence of her beloved. So how can we live out this joyful presence of God, who we know loves us? Throughout her spiritual diary, St. Teresa makes various concrete resolutions to live out this divine joy. One of these resolutions is to strive to work for the happiness of others. This helps us to forget ourselves and imitate the love of God. How can I work for the happiness of those around me in the concrete situations in which I find myself today? Another of her resolutions is to strive to be cheerful. St. Teresa made this resolution when she was extremely ill, so ill, in fact, that fatigue never left her. She writes that she had to use all her strength of will not to be overcome by sadness. For Teresa, to strive to be cheerful did not mean to deny that she felt sorrow or fatigue. Rather, it was the response of faith, hope, and love to that very same sorrow and fatigue. She was joyful to suffer with Jesus in order to console him. Above all, the most important way to live divine joy is to strive with perseverance to live in the presence of the Trinity who loves us. When Teresa read St. Elizabeth of the Trinity's writings, she determined, I will imitate her and become a saint. With God's grace and with St. Elizabeth's help, she achieved this. Today, let us ask St. Teresa of the Andes and St. Elizabeth of the Trinity to help us also to live always in the presence of the Trinity with our faith wholly vigilant wholly adoring, and wholly surrendered to his creative action. Alma, Redemptoris Mater,